Welcome back to our show. T on today's show, we have Zoe Bentley, a self-proclaimed lifelong unschooler. What does this mean? Well, being a lifelong unschooler means that instead of going to school, I grew up following my interests and learning based off of what I'm actually interested in. And this has led me to all sorts of different subjects that you wouldn't even think would be related. So, how did you learn differently than your friends and all the people around you, the schoolmates that would have been schoolmates? Well, actually a lot of my friends do go to school, some of them are homeschooled, and some of them are unschooled like myself. Some of my friends learn the same way as me, basically, because they're also unschooled. But I learned differently from my homeschooled and regularly, traditionally schooled friends because when they get interested in something, they have to wait until they're done with their classes and their homework before they can actually delve into their interests. And when they do have a school-related interest, like say math, then they get cut off when their time for math is done and they have to move on to a different subject. And I haven't had to do this as an unschooler, which means that I never have to stop learning. So when you do want to learn about something new that, say, your parents know nothing about, what do you do? How do you even know that that subject exists? That's a good question. I learn about new subjects because they're just out there in the world. Things happen in real life that I just find interesting. And sometimes I'll be in the middle of researching a topic that I already know exists, and I'll find something related to that that I've never heard of before. Can you give me an example of that? Something that your parents never had heard of before. Okay, I have the perfect story. I've always loved geology, the study of the earth and rocks, and when I was about 13, I took a class at my local community college about geology. And around the end of this class, I heard the word exogeology. Kind of a funny word. Yeah, and what does it mean? It means the geology of other planets than Earth. And I had never heard this word before, but because I was interested in geology, I followed that interest and it led me to exogeology, which my parents had never, never heard of either. So the first thing I did is I read about it, I asked my parents what they knew, and I researched exogeology on websites. They helped me, my parents helped me to find resources to find out more. Is there, is this an actual career, or do people really do this? Yes, absolutely. Have you ever met anyone that does this? I have met several people who work actually doing exogeology. A more common term for it is planetary science, and I actually run a website where I interview planetary scientists. Don't you need a lot of school to become an exogeologist? You need to learn a lot, but that is not the same exact thing as school. School is one way to learn math and science and everything related to exogeology, but the best way to learn about these topics is to actually go out in the world and do things, talk to people, read books, do everything that you can think of, go interesting places. Do you know what you want to be when you grow up? As an unschooler, I found that I don't need to wait until I grow up in order to actually live my life and do what I want to. How will you make money? Well, my dream job is to work for NASA as an exogeologist, studying the data that comes back from other planets. My other potential job ideas are working for the show Jeopardy, traveling around the world filming video clues, or I can do any number of things because I know how to research and follow up on any interest that I have until I find something that works and I can always learn more. This sounds like lots of fun, but what is a typical day like for you? Because certainly you have responsibilities and chores and things you have to do. 
That's a very good question. Seeing what a typical day like is actually very hard because every day is a little bit different. But my, my family generally has three types of typical days. The first type is when we just stay at home and we do things at home like the laundry and dishes and we also read and talk. We talk all the time, including the laundry and dishes time we spend talking because why not? And it is great to just talk about everything. What are the other types of typical days? You said three? Yes, there are three. The second type is out and about days where we run errands and also have day trips to interesting places in our area. I remember that some of my favorite day trips have included going to caves and mines and observatories. Would this include trips to the grocery store and the bank, all the responsibilities? Yes, it would. In fact, I love grocery shopping. <laughs> and so what is this third typical day like? This third typical day is very exciting. That is our trip day. When we go on a trip, not a vacation, because these are very busy trips, often spent as sort of a working trip, and we will go somewhere far away. We often speak at conferences. My family has just recently returned from a conference in California here, all about homeschooling, and we very much enjoy speaking at those. And along the way, we visit places that we have always wanted to go and that we just stumble upon. Did you stumble upon anything on your recent trip? Actually, we did. On our way home to where we are right now, we stumbled upon a little town called Boron, California, which you might not have ever heard of. It's a fairly small town, but that's the self-proclaimed Borax capital of the world, and they have a huge open pit mine, and that it's sounds, very interesting. Yeah, it sounds really interesting, and I would love to hear more about it after our break. Thank you.